most of us doubt that we can be guided to make the best decision in business or to find our soulmate by this thing called intuition. Hello and welcome to Spiritually Hungry. How you doing? Very good. Excited really to good. have a conversation with you. Yes. Just the two of us. Just the two of us. And all of those listening. All of them. <laughs> Today I'm very excited about our topic. We are going to speak about intuition. Well, and beyond. We're going to talk about intuition, and but beyond. more specifically, we want to dive into the four levels of our intuition. So first I want to just give a definition of intuition because it varies depending on if you're looking at it from a scientific perspective or a Kabbalistic perspective or any other spiritual perspective. So intuition can be tricky to explain. Some call it a sixth sense. And I think it's tricky because our senses can be deceiving, yet they are revealing. So how do you know when something is true or where it's coming from? And how do you know to trust it? As Kabbalah teaches, we live in the 1% realm, 1% realm, which is a pinhole view of our world. But often we take that view very seriously. And then the 99% realm we know is out there too. And I think intuition lies somewhere in the middle of that. Experience may seem inconsequential, yet we still feel the need to act when that intuition kicks in. So take the story of Aline McMahon, who'd been planning to visit Istanbul. Just before the trip, she felt a hunch, an inner push to cancel her flight. And we hear many stories like this, right? So only later was the wisdom of her of this choice revealed. Just as she would have arrived, the massive earthquake of 1999 decimated the area, killing and injuring thousands. Others have been guided in positive directions through unseen urgings. Einstein called intuition a sacred gift that helped inspire some of his best ideas. Oprah Winfrey claims to have trusted the still small voice of intuition her entire life and countless more credit intuition for helping them find jobs, relationships, etc. But truly, we do, most of us, until you learn to pay attention to it and you learn to decipher what comes from the 1% realm versus the 99%, most of us doubt that we can be guided to make the best decision in business or to find our soulmate by this thing called intuition. So what is intuition? I think more importantly, I think our viewers are probably wondering, how do I cultivate that? How do I grow that? So what is intuition? Rather than being the opposite of logic or reason, recent studies suggest that intuitive thinking is an adjunct skill that can be developed and sharpened. According to clinical psychiatrist, Dr. Judith Orloff, intuition operates through the entire right side of the brain, the side that perceives patterns and big picture perceptions, as well as through the hippocampus and the gut. As for those gut feelings we talk about, our digestive tracts are in constant communication with the brain via the estimated 100 million neurons lining them. Clearly, intuition is a whole body experience. So science supports all this, but I, we're obviously going to talk about a different part that we lead with, with our soul. But it's interesting that all of these different things are set up in our bodies to help us be able to become aware of when intuition is guiding us. Dr. Orloff also explained the idea of women's intuition, which I thought was kind of interesting. We hear that a lot. I don't know if men like to hear it, but from a psychological perspective, she explains that because the corpus callosum, the white matter connecting right and left brain hemispheres, is thicker in women, they can more easily integrate the analytic mind when emotional and the gut feelings arise. So we want to talk specifically about the four levels of intuition. Right. So, before we go into the four different levels, which I think is really important, I'd say a few preliminary ideas. First, that this is not um, a nice to have. This isn't just sort of a, a, a you know, some people have it, some people don't. Unless each everybody one of, has it, let's unless, just be super clear, right? But unless we actually develop our intuition, I would say even go higher into the four levels that we're going to discuss. It is unlikely that we are going to actually live the life that we're meant to live. Because uh, the the universe, the light of the Creator, is giving a mess giving us messages all the time, and unless we find the way to be more in tune with those messages, to hear them, to receive them, to act upon them, we're actually not going to live the life we're supposed to be living. 
Did you know, and I, I didn't know this actually until I started to kind of think about this more, the U.S. Office of Naval Research is currently working on methods such as virtual stimulation to help soldiers' intuition, like to, to tap into that in high-pressure scenarios. Interesting. Isn't that? Yeah, I mean, I'd like to hear more about that. Um, but it reminds me, you know, Daniel Kahneman in his book, Thinking Fast and Slow, he speaks about, you know, that there's, there's two ways to think and, and that his idea is that intuition is actually the culmination of all the wisdom, all the information that a person has. That's why a doctor in the middle of a surgery might know the exact right decision to make, even though he's not, he, it's not sort of a thought process that goes on in his mind, but simply all the years of practice experience. and experience. So that's one level, right? So, so intuition can come. Um, and I know it's true. I mean, you know, even even as I get even as I That's get a very older, scientific right understanding, right? I, I know that I can meet somebody and I can very much, yeah. you know, ascertain the type of person they are much more quickly than I could ten years ago, twenty years. I can ago. do that with relationships Th too, right? Where ago. you're so that's one level, but but I think what we, what we where we want to go, which I think is more important, is this understanding that we're living a life where everything is a message right imagine you know even those of us who are maybe of our listeners who think that they are intuitive you know how often do you get a message is it once a year is it once a month once a week once a day it's not more often than that but in reality in reality the light of the creator is giving us messages all the time and and you know i, I like to think about it as you know the, the universe conspiring for our good but again, unless you're open to that, unless you're aware of it, unless you're listening for it, you're going to miss it. Do you and ever you, have? Sorry, yeah. do you ever have those moments where this happens to me a lot? Like I'll have like a nagging thing of like, oh, something random that doesn't really make sense in terms of what I'm doing. Like I'll think about orange juice or like, oh, maybe we like even on a grocery list. I'll go, I'll actually be in a store. And I keep looking at the soy sauce, and I'm like, but I don't think we need some. Do we need it? And I go home, and sure enough, Abigail's eating sushi. Do we have soy sauce? We don't, right? Or like, I'll be thinking about something, and then like hours later, that thing actually is right in front of me that I needed. Like, you get those signs the more that you grow this part yeah. of yourself. And and I think using the soy sauce is a perfect example. The idea is, and again, I hope I explain this well, right? That the universe is constantly conspiring for our good. Which literally means like something most of the that you know, my big life decisions I can call upon those messages. No, the reality is that for every step that you take, mm -hmm. there's there's a message, and even something as trivial, relatively, as getting soy sauce for your kid, that's the the truth, and 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 the messages are there all the time. So just like it's there for the soy sauce, it's there for your big life decision, and and I think it's about opening up our mind, our consciousness to the fact that. Not only is the universe conspiring for our benefit, and that the messages are coming all the time in all areas for all things, and that and that it's it's actually a necessary a necessary part of our development as a human beings, certainly develop our spiritual development to become more and more attuned. So that so much so that I would say to our listeners that you have to get if you if you think you're a spiritual person, one of the important tests or gauges needs to be you know would you say that today more than last year, today more than last month, you're more in tune and receiving more of those messages that are coming to you. It's so interesting too, because I can tell you, even a lot of the things that I've written or books that I've written, it was something that at the moment, right, whether it's a story or an exchange that I've had with somebody, it was a moment that kind of was bigger than the moment. And then years later, I'm writing about it, right? Or it's become like a whole idea or a bigger concept for me and for others. It's those moments. And you start, the more you pay attention to it, the more you, you're able to recognize it when it's happening as being something bigger. And bigger. Yeah, very much so. And for me, it's just probably for me, some of the most exciting uh, messages is that if, if I look at the important concepts, spiritual concepts to me. And I, and I've been studying this for over 40 years, but the concepts that are foremost in my mind that I've been developing, thinking about, teaching about the past five years are very different than 10 years ago, very different than 20 years ago. And for me, that's one of the greatest um, indications of, of, of these messages because I know that they're not coming from me. Uh, that there, you know, so in the fact that I either, you know, I'll read something like even just happens happening to me today, where you, you literally are, are led down this rabbit hole, for lack of a better example, and you're coming, you you really feel you're being guided by the Creator uh, to to an idea, 
to an idea that you know you get the inklings of, and then you develop it more, and then it becomes more and more part of your life. For, so for me, probably the greatest area of inspiration uh, around these messages that that we're receiving is this idea that you know I I never I always say this I never want any lecture that I give anything that I share to be of me right, but rather to be di directed by the light of the Creator. What you know what are the what are the, the ideas and and that and this can relate to something that that we speak about a lot, but the idea of newness mm -hmm. is that if you understand that the the energy around this is being renewed all the time you're being renewed all the time both physically and certainly spiritually then then if you're giving this if you're getting the same message today than you did 10 years ago that means you're not connecting to the new light that's being revealed now by the new messages you know and again i yeah, I always get excited by those kinds of thoughts that feel different than the ones you had. Even yeah, a few and they weeks must ago. be, and they yeah. must be, and 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 I often say that, and not just thoughts about your life, but things that you read that you understand in a different way, and for sure, in a deeper like, way. Yeah, and and that and that if, you know, we've said this before, but I think it's important. Like, if if I was the same person a year from now as I am today, meaning with the same thoughts, I'd be very concerned, right? I'd because, be very bored. <laughs> <laughs> but but you have to be developing, right? The way you develop is by being open and, and more attuned to the messages that are coming from the outside all the time, which is, I think, both both exciting, inspiring, but maybe most importantly for our listeners to understand, necessary, necessary. Th this process of receiving messages is something that everybody has to be going through all the time. So that's why I think that this will probably be interesting, maybe surprising to our listeners that there are four levels. I think most are familiar with the first one, which is just intuition. It's when your soul is leading you. You don't have absolute clarity, but you have a sense that this is the right direction. It's kind of like the gut feeling, woman's intuition, that thing that says, you know, like, Aline, don't get, get on the plane, don't get on the plane, that kind of thing. Um, did you want to add to that? No, I think that's the most basic level. I, I think right. we, we, we'd like to take our listeners as to so what's beyond that. Correct. The, right. I just want to make yeah. sure if you wanted to add to that first level. Michael. No, you did it so well. Oh, thank you. <laughs> the second is divine inspiration. This is clear. Your soul knows that this is the right direction, and it's something that comes from inside of you. So I think that the way I would explain or describe this is when your internal matches your external. So whatever you are putting out there in the world, your actions, your thoughts, your intentions are coming from deep within you. And then that aligns you to that energy that helps you see clearly. Yeah, you can explain it like that. Or I would explain it. No, I'm just thinking this might my, my experience of it, right? So my experience of it is, is and now because we deal so often with people, People coming to us with with news, uh, questions, a, a need for advice or direction. So I can I can clearly use two examples. So when somebody comes to me, and thankfully, and I really believe this is not because of any of my own work, but you know, there's this idea that if you're doing for others, the light of the Creator will be giving you the messages for others. So so a person comes to me, and he or she has a problem or an issue, a question they have, and in the conversation sort of the, the direction becomes clear to me. Okay, you know, you're thinking about this, or what about that? The direction becomes clear. I would l relate that to the level called intuition. Right. And every once in a while, there's like, it's clear, this is exactly what you need to be hearing. And I personally get very, very excited. So it's more of a definitive. It's very definitive, and it's definitely not coming from me, right? It's, you know, like you said, it's called divine inspiration. It's actually the literal translation, which is a phrase that is used in many of the ancient texts, is Ruach HaKodesh, or the Holy Spirit, which has obviously different connotations in, 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 in Christianity, but maybe not because it, I believe it's strongly, it comes from these Kabbalistic understandings, be that as it may. Um, so, yeah, so divine inspiration is this clarity that comes about a person, about a situation. You know, and, and again, I, I, and I, I often wonder, because again, I feel very strongly both of the times that I'm having an intuitive conversation with somebody who has a question or needs an answer, uh, uh, direction. So where, you know, to me, it's not a hard thing clear. This is the answer, but we get there by, by, by process of, 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 of moving forward in the, in the, in the, in the conversation. And then at the end, it's, it's clear to them. It's clear to me what the answer should be, what the direction should be. This, the other case, the first one. That's the well. That was the first one, right? The second, which I would call divine inspiration. Right. So the is first when, intuition, because you said divine inspiration. First is intuition, right? So that's coming more from you have clarity, but it's coming from thought. It's coming from thought and process. Correct. And this, experience. 
second, the divine inspiration, there actually is no thought. It's kind of what... Well, it you, can be It can be in right, the process of thought. Right, but you answer it almost before your brain's like, wait, you you even you feel compelled to say it because it's it's going through you. Right. And then after your mind's like, yes, yes, that's right. But it's a completely different feeling and process because it's coming, like I said, from internal, like in your... I want to say heart, but it's not. It's like, but it's that part of your body. It's going through you. Right. Right, and the, se right, the, right, the second one is complete clarity. And I, I've had these conversations with the people where they had a question or they were, they were going through something, and I and I tell them because it becomes definitive, definitive yeah. to me. This is exactly what you need to do. I always wonder whether people actually listen to me or don't, but that you know I don't really care so much. But you don't really. I'm sure when you say that because you don't really speak in those terms. So I think that every once in a while I do. You've, you've been on calls where I've, where I've said that. Where I have no question. This is exactly the yeah. pro either the problem or. Yes, the no question. Because I, yes. because, because I try to be, I try to be honest, right? So if if, if I feel it's more intuitive, I want to let the process go, and I, I have a conversation. But every once in a while, we get to that point where I would call the divine inspiration. Where oh no, absolutely, this is the problem, or this is the issue, or this is what you need to do. Um, I find that very exciting again because I think it's a it's a manifestation of that divine spirit, that divine inspiration, uh, when you gain to clarity about a situation, a problem, or an issue. Yes. I was just thinking about something that happened earlier, right before we started recording. I was, you know, I always organize whenever I go into any room. And so I did. And then I walked to the front of the room to just see, I don't even know what. And then I found something that I really needed today that shouldn't have been here that got delivered downstairs. And if I hadn't actually walked over there, I would, it would have cut, like, I would have had to do a lot of things later in the day for this thing, right? Yeah. So it's that kind of thing, right? That was just like, well, that's the first level, but still, it's that, yeah. that guy. I actually, with you, have the opposite, uh, uh, <laughs> the opposite experience. But you walk where, in a room and make a mess? No, no, no I, I walk in a room and I, I know that something that I put there isn't there anymore. <laughs> that I have to ask you yes, where, I moved where it. you hit it. Yes, you're very intuitive. <laughs> okay, the third and you're level. Right, the opposite of divine inspiration. <laughs> I will divinely inspire you. <laughs> The third level is prophecy. Right. I love this word. This is not reserved for the prophets alone. It's coming from the outside, from the light of the creator, a feeling that you must do something. So... Yeah, I love this word, and I think for maybe many of our listeners, it's a kind of a strange word. It has religious connotations. It has historic connotations. Well, Taylor Swift is modernizing that. Oh, that, right, right, that right. Word all a, over the place. I totally forgot. I it's love true. it. Yeah, it's actually one of my favorite songs. Um, but... So this is the thing. It's it's a feeling that comes from, it's something that you're, it's almost like a calling. Is that right. how you explain it? It's like right. you're compelled, you must do this. So now it's almost like, it's not your thought, which is the first one in your head. It's not even your the part of your chest, that heart that's like, okay, this is, you know, definitive. But now it's almost like your body is like jumping into like, this must happen, I must do. And logic really isn't there for the most part. Right, right. And and again, I, I'm very excited about the topic of, of prophecy. Again, I, I really enjoy learning the historical context, you know, in the literally the prophets. Uh, but... Well, would you want to share a little bit about that? Uh, yeah, I mean, what, again, I... I, I know it's very, very yeah, heady it's been, and, and, and no, lengthy. No, not just heady, it's been... And lengthy, but yes. what, what would you... What excites you most about that? So, my two favorite prophets, Jeremiah and Isaiah... I love those names. Um, and with Jeremiah, for example, he, like you said, it's a, it's a calling. And when Jeremiah was first called, you know, he's very reticent. He, you know, he says, you know, you know, I'm not worthy, right? And then the message comes, you know, you you need to be the messenger. And then uh, there's that phrase, you know, I am here. He says to the Creator, he says, I am here. Send me to where you will. So, I, but I, what I get inspired about in, in the lives of the prophets, certainly the, the major prophets, is that total commitment to hear, you know, call it the, the voice of God or the calling from the divine, but really what it is, is, is available for every single person in our generation even, to say, you know, I, I want to get, I want to live my life based on the divine plan for my life. Which, and again, and one more thing, and then, and then one of my favorite and this repeats itself often in the prophecy, in the, the ancient, the original words in the Hebrew, in the ancient Hebrew are, Vayhid dvar Hashem elai lemo, and behold, the word of God came to me to say, right, to prophesy, to share. And what I think... Wait, wait, say the last part. Vayhid dvar Hashem elai lemo, and the, 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 the voice of the word of God came to me or was revealed to me to share it. And and that that's that's kind of that's often how the prophecy begins. 
But and you need to be at a certain level to be well, able to discern. Well, so this is the point. I, I, what How do you know? <laughs> well, I want to say two. Where that's coming from? Two. Right. Two very important ideas related to this. First is that this is something that every single one of us needs to aspire to. Why? Because really, what prophecy is about is is my and your and every one of our listeners life plan or divine plan when i if i would ask what one of our your listeners, desired plan well certainly more than our desired plan but I, I, this is a very important nuanced slightly nuanced idea which i think is really i really uh, i'm excited to share with our listeners and i really hope it, it, it's impactful for for our listeners if i asked many of our listeners you know everybody i'm assuming listening to this podcast is either spiritual desire to be spiritual what is your spiritual life you know what's your hope from your spiritual life? What where do you want it to take you? Right. I think many people think that life and certainly their spiritual life is this sort of meandering path. You know, I do my yoga, I meditate, I'm a, become a better person. Maybe I'm less reactive. I take a Kabbalah class. You know, but I'm sort of meandering through life, becoming a a better person, feeling a little bit better about myself, and so on and so forth. That's a very. Well, why, why are you Just know how you're thinking. Yes, <laughs> That's a very dangerous thought, because the truth is, and I use two examples. I've shared this recently. Is that there's a, a a statement from one of the Kabbalists who said that you know you have to know that life, more importantly, your life plan is a very narrow bridge. Mm -hmm. Why why use that phrase a very narrow bridge? Because you actually don't have leeway. You don't have those shoulders on the road that you can go in and out and around. You need to be steady and straight on that narrow bridge. You have an exact, right? An exact process that your soul needs to go through. Uh, Rav Ashley, one of the great Kabbalists, uses the example of a, of a, from the moment of birth to the moment a person leaves this world is a line. It's a very narrow line to which to which one should adhere if he or she is to actually accomplish what their soul came to this world to accomplish. So that's my the first point, which I think is really important, that that it's really important that we accept that first of all, we have there is a divine plan for for our lives. And that our desire should not be to generally be a spiritual person, sort of, you know, as we said, meandering, you know, through a through a winding path, but rather to how how do I stick to that narrow bridge of my life, of my life path? And I'll use an example, which I think is, is, is important to understand. Today, you know, you, I, I'm sure many of our listeners, we did very good things. Maybe some of us today did some not great things, but let's not talk about that. Let's talk about the good things we did. I helped this person, right? John, I helped John. And, uh, and you know, Sarah helped, asked me for assistance. I helped her. So I helped two people today. That's a lot, right? Some people don't help anybody. But what if... To keep to, to actually reveal my life, I needed to help Sam. I didn't help Sam because I knew it was going to take me three hours to help. You know, John took me twenty seconds, and to help Sarah it took me two minutes. So I, I felt, but I felt good about that, right? But, but I know helping Sam's going to take me three hours. I don't have three hours to spare a day, right? But in reality, my soul's purpose today was not to help Sarah, nor to help to help John, nor to help Sarah. It was actually to help Sam. So. I think most of us don't compute life that way. We say, well, it was a good day. I helped a few people. I didn't help one person. It was too difficult for me, right? So that's so hard because how do you, because oh, are you suggesting, I'm suggesting that prophecy. you say yes to every no, single No, absolutely not. Absolutely not. In this Sam, case, Sarah, John, you probably Michelle, should have said no yeah. to John and to Sarah and said and yes. And you would to, know that if you were. Exactly. If you were living a life, what I would call prophecy, but basically what that means. A life that is really being with, with that begins with a desire to be on the narrow path of my life, of my soul, and then getting the messages. If you were on the state of prophecy, when you woke up this morning and you got the three texts, Sarah, John, you'd say, Oh, wow, Sam, it feels like Sam really needs my help today. And even though it's a more challenging one, it's a more difficult one, this is where I'm going to spend three hours. Right? Or even if it's not right, because they just checked in and I had these other people to meet, but that, because that feeling. Yes, I hear you. And unless my, my my point is that unless you have prophecy, unless you are asking to be directed by the div divine plan for your soul, you're going to live a good life, but actually not your life. 
You know what the issue is? Is as you were speaking, I was thinking about gymnastics. <laughs> because why? For a gymnast, right? They start at a very tender young age. And they are very clear what their goal is, right? If they want to be a professional gymnast and they want to go to the Olympics, they know there's a very, very narrow bridge to get from where they are to where they need to be. There's no deviating from that because the goal is super clear. They're they're very clear about where they're supposed to end up. I think the problem for most people in the world is it's not so clear, or maybe yeah, no, it's they, absolutely or maybe they think it's just too hard. So. I'll be, you know, like, I'll be spiritual. At least I'm better than my neighbor or better than the family I came from or better than who I was 10 years ago. But could I really be like Jeremiah or Isaiah? Who's even thinking about Jeremiah and Isaiah, right? Or I I think that's the main problem. No, for sure. That we're not clear what our end goal is. Absolutely. And I think worse than that. Nor do we necessarily desire it, is what I think. Well, that's the second part. But the first part is is I think where the where the where the main problem lies is that too many of us are not thinking about that narrow path. We think it's okay. It's actually beautiful. Just be this meandering spiritual person, you know, living life. Um, That's funny because when you said the narrow path and you talked about Ravashlag and the line. I actually got chills all over my body. Why? Because my soul is actually like, yeah, that's true. That's what we're in. Again, and that's intuition too, right? My body actually just told me that that is truth that you heard and you must listen to it. I mean, of course, I'm already doing that, but I think it's those kinds of little things, right? But it, it's a really rethinking of life where what is your end goal and, and more importantly and, and it and, can't and, just be i want this this that, way, and also this i want to be careful with that phrase and goal because for some people say oh i want to be fame right no, I, mean, no, I, I meant I, end of life right uh, oh end of, yeah yeah because like what well, someone <laughs> said yeah, I mean. yeah because i i have no idea what my end goal is no i mean i mean yeah. where you want to end up at the end right of, right right because because another um, distraction, and I unfortunately see this a lot. I know people who are quote unquote spiritual who want to, you know, be really famous in the spiritual world, right? Mm-hmm. Actually, the reality is that that desire is going to pull a person completely Away. off. They might still be seen in the world as a spiritual person. They can't person. be what's leading them. You, they can't coexist because they're completely opposite. Because the ego is there, and therefore there's no way he or she is going to be following the divine plan. But but back, I, I just want to really underscore this because I think it's so important in me, for many reasons, but, but certainly as it relates to the, our topic today of prophecy. I am asking our listeners to really take a moment and think about this idea. You know, how honestly have you been viewing or if you, have you been giving enough thought to your soul's path? And and be honest with yourself and say, is it true that you saw it as this, you know, again, meandering, uh, you know, on narrow path that you could just, you know, mosey on along? The first step to living your soul's life, your soul's purpose, is by knowing that it's actually an exact one, number one, and not, number two is what you said, is desiring, actually desiring for that to be your life. You know, I, I use the example. Well, people are afraid what they'd have to give up in order right, to do that. Right, right, right. It's scary. It is scary on the one hand, but I use the example that some of our listeners might know, but there's a famous story in the Bible, in the Torah, about the Israelites in the desert. How, how do they decide where to go? How do they travel? Well, it says that there was this cloud and whenever they would they would need to travel, the cloud would lift off the ground, and it would they would literally follow the cloud in the desert. Sometimes it took them it would, they would travel for a day, and sometimes for a week, and sometimes for a month, and the cloud rested, and they know oh this is where we stop. Now there were there were spiritual reasons. There were there were what we call sparks of light that they needed to elevate, and, and that's where they're being taken in to different these places. places. But irregardless, forget about why. The thing is, for a person to follow a cloud, and that's where they end up that day or that's where their energy was going like that's a kind of certainty and trust well this is the but well, more but to your second point of 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 it going it's going to be uncomfortable you know i, I often ask the question wouldn't we want that i know many of our listeners say you know if yeah, right, what i want to be right, where right the decision to be. point you yeah. know don't where i don't i want to be exactly want to be don't i want to marry exactly what i'm supposed to marry do what i want to do exactly what i'm supposed to do today everything we've spoken until now everybody's gonna say yes yes everybody well, wants it and of what does that take exactly so so imagine this group of about three and a half million israelites in the desert the cloud goes down right so they know they need to park there for well they don't know for how long they might 
sit there for an hour and the cloud gets up and they ought to leave. They might sit down there and, and they'll be there for a day or they might be there for a week or might be there for a month. They literally have no control. That's the thing. About <laughs> how long they're staying there, how long they're walking for, how long they're camping for, how long they're moving for. And only the only reason this actually happened for them, as it can happen for you and I and every one of our listeners, is to the degree that we're actually willing, actually willing, to do what it is that we're supposed to be doing. I think for many of us, like you said, we don't want to because it might be uncomfortable, this is not the right day for me, and so on and so forth. But also, if you're kind of used to getting feedback and people liking you and telling you certain things and having that level of comfort and control in your life, you've set up your day exactly so you can receive those things that now you're dependent on in life, you might not want to give that up. If I, if, if you knew, right, and you had this prophecy that you're supposed to, anytime somebody gives you any positive feedback, you reject it, you run from it, or you set yourself up so you don't hear, you just give all day, right? People are, are now addicted to that need for external validation, Absolutely. whatever you want to call it, right? So what we're talking about, if you want to get to this level and really hear and feel called to do what you must, it is going to be, you have to give up things that you actually enjoy Absolutely. in that way. So uh, we talk about three, I think it's three very important steps, and I want to talk about a fourth one if we can. Yes, we are going to talk about the fourth. Well, not the fourth level, the fourth um, step necessary to be able to truly receive prophecy. Uh -huh. So first, we said it's to know that I have a narrow path for my soul, and I want, first of all, that it exists, and that's what I want. And it's exact. And it's exact. Second, that I am, I want to hear the message, call it prophecy, even if it's uncomfortable. So desire. So my desire for it, even though at times it will be uncomfortable, I want it. And third is, there's a, there's a, a verse in- so You're in, saying this was a fourth, but it's actually a third. Yes, I made a big mistake. You, <laughs> I just want everybody to be super clear. I don't want you to confuse them. I, when I count, I do one, two, four. I never count threes. <laughs> <laughs> Um, <laughs> People are going to believe that about you. Really? Why not? <laughs> so, um, third, opening your ear to hear the message, and this is a base. There's a verse in Psalms where King David says, "I I lent my ear, I bent my ear." Right? There's this concept. It's also in 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 uh, uh, we find this in Shakespeare. Right? This idea that it's not enough to know that it's there, actually paying attention. So. For example, there's a, a teaching, uh, uh, an ancient teaching that says that every single day there's a voice that uh, comes forth from what's called Mount Choreb or Mount Sinai, where the, where the um, divine revelation occurred in the desert, and it goes to every single person, awakening them to change, to, to come closer to the light of the Creator. And one of the great Kabbalists, the Baal Shem Tov, asked the question, he says, why, well, this is happening every single day, and it's coming to every single person, why isn't everybody hearing it? And is it saying specifically what you what is the message? Well, it's, it's coming to awaken every single person in their own way, in whatever way to they change, need to. to grow, to connect to the light of the Creator. So he says, he says, yes, it's true that your soul is hearing that voice, but your conscious mind has to be blending its ear, bending its ear to listen to the divine message. Mm -hmm. So you can accept that your life is a narrow path and you want to live it, and that you're willing to be uncomfortable to get that message. But the prophecy won't come unless you're actually really starting to listen. What does that mean? That means if you understand that everything coming into your life is a message from the light of the Creator, and you really do the work, and this is a practice, a daily practice. Choices every day. Yeah. Right. What, what, by the way, in this, you get to a point where you realize there's more messages coming than I, than I can even take in, but be open to that, to that voice, to that calling. I, and, I, and I'll share with you, this, and this might be weird or not, but, but the point is even the, 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 the prophecy, prophecy isn't always, and usually not actually, uh, a conscious thought that comes, right? No, it's It's not. an internal awakening of inspiration. So for instance, today as I was preparing for this podcast, I was looking out, we have a tree that grows outside of our of our window in our office, and I literally felt the energy coming from the from the leaves, the leaves were, were moving. And this is the idea. The idea is you start ma making yourself open. You know, whether... It's like Moana, honey. Tell the me more. Remind me. Exactly. Me. <laughs> there you I go. I don't know. 
Keep going. Where did it go? No, I don't know. She sings like, way well, too high which, for me. Which actually, it's actually, I, it's a very inspiring song. <laughs> I actually wanted to do a lecture around, like with that concept. It's this. It's exactly this. So, which leads me to a very important uh, corollary to that, which is that we are supposed to be hearing the 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 speech. What it's called the speech or the speaking of the trees, of the leaves, of the birds. Meaning, when you go out or in the morning, you hear the beautiful chirping of the. The birds. That's not just a beautiful experience to have. They're actually sending you messages, and all you need to say at that point is not, "Oh, what's the answer to one plus one is two, Right? Not that. Oh, I have this decision to. But I want to be open to that. Not define. according to Doctor Ellen Langer. It's not. What do you mean? One plus one is two. Right. right. Um, Call back to an, to a <laughs> episode before. But again, but but my point is that you have to make yourself open. What's to the interesting. call, to the call of nature, to the call. and now then you then you also also when somebody tells you you, you know the, we we know this very often in the czar that they would they would be walking and they needed an answer they go to a child and say tell me something right. and in that in those words they'd have an answer. The more you open yourself up, or really lend your ear to listen to the trees, but not just listen to the beautiful rustling of the wind, and the leaves, but rather knowing that there's a message here for you. I mean, you hear the birds chirping. It's not just listening to the birds, but you know that they're actually giving you energy, giving you a message. And you go throughout your life that this table that we're sitting on right now is, is here to give me a message today, different than yesterday. And you open yourself up, then you you will see that inspiration, that prophecy, as we would call it. Well, how, is when was the last time the table spoke to you? Right now. What does it tell you? That's my point. It's not about it saying, "Oh hi," <laughs> you know, uh, but it's but but it, but it's it's giving me an energy that I need for an answer that I might that I might need in five minutes, right? Okay. Whereas the table is making me feel hungry. Really? Yeah. <laughs> no, no, it's maybe on your side. On my side is giving me really deep spiritual awakenings. Well, you know what's interesting? We were just at a wedding this past Sunday, and I don't know if you noticed, but at one point in the ceremony, at like well, actually one of the most important parts of the ceremony. The, we, it was an outdoor wedding and the birds just in the bush right behind where you were standing they started really getting very oh, loud and speaking I did and I was wondering I'm like wonder what they're saying and it was for the couple I knew but I don't speak bird and that well well you need to start speaking bird you need to start, <laughs> and this is the this is the understanding for every and for every one of our listeners when we talk about prophecy we're talking about listen, learning but I was this, aware I was aware exactly. that there was something going on there. and 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 what I would say again to add to that not just there's something going on right that these birds are talking to me right that they're they're sending me energy that the, the the leaves are sending me energy that that this table is sending me a message why are you saying it sound crazy <laughs> is that, that, that you have that look on your face well that's okay that's okay <laughs> Are you sending me a, no, mes- a new message because, now? I mean, obviously, I agree with, but yeah, you sound a little bit nutty. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. That's okay. That's um, okay. Well, again, but the thing is to hear when you listen. It's interesting because, like, sometimes Abigail, especially in the morning, she'll talk really softly. She's just woken up, and when I and I really, really want to understand what she's saying. So what I do is I lean in with my ear, and everything else is still around me. I'm not here. I'm not paying attention to anything else. I'm not looking at anything else. I'm just open, and I think it's with that kind of awareness, right, and response to what's around you is Absolutely. what we're talking about. To have. Yeah. Yeah, so I'm not crazy. No. <laughs> okay, good. Well, again, I think it's really important for our listeners, right? Th- this understand everything we've shared, but really, yeah, I think it's cute. You get them all excited. Yeah, I believe in this very strong. I do too. And, I, and, and I just want to. But remind, there's one more level too, which I which do. Which we're wanna... not going to get to today. Well, you can't. You have to at least say what it is. Okay, the highest level. Now, I do want to say this one thing before okay. that, unless you're following these three steps. And gaining it, what we we're calling that prophecy, and hopefully all listeners understand on a deeper level what that means. Then, it's unlikely that you're actually going to live your life's plan, your true life's plan. So this isn't just you know a, you know a nice thing. It speaks to me. It doesn't speak to me. This is actually a necessary skill of prophecy that every one of our listeners needs. I need it. You need it. Every one of our listeners needs and needs to develop it. In order to make sure that we're we're following the narrow path, of what our a soul. gift, right? That we have that the universe is set up in a way to conspire for us to help us, and there's we just have to learn to pay attention to yeah. the right things. Yeah, absolutely. So quickly, <laughs> okay. So four is divine thought of the creator. This one's really tricky um, because it means being completely in tuned one hundred percent of the time with this light 
And when you've achieved level four, you're a person who does not have one thought or one desire that's not completely in tune with the light of the creator, which means you need to remove your desire to receive for the self Your alone. ego. Your ego. Exactly. Right. So again, I, I think this is a very high level. And I think we've all experienced one, exactly. some two and three. But also, also maybe Probably moments more of, two. Maybe moments of four. So I just want to explain a little bit, a little bit. Uh, maybe at another point, another time, we'll go more deeply into it. But you know, th there's a phrase that the Kabbalists use, which is, "You can be either like a, in your relationship with the light of the Creator as a master to a, a servant to a master," which means, you know, the master tells the servant, "I want you to bring water." He he goes brings water. It's not his own thought, but he he's a he's a devout. Uh, a he servant, follows. so he'll follow everything, every every message that the master gives him, he'll follow. And I think most of us are, you know, hopefully in level three of prophecy is in that state where you're getting the message, you're doing it because you really want to do it, like we've spoken until now. The highest level, the fourth level, as it's called to, is like a man or woman, a person with their mind, right? If I have an itch on my on my shoulder, the, my mind doesn't say to my hand, "Hey, hand, it's, I have a scratch, an itch there, can you please scratch it?" And then my hand gets the message, right? It, <laughs> another thing, I'm crazy. <laughs> Good, good. That I think that's the good bottom line of this. Uh, I'm losing my mind. God forbid, I'm really enjoying myself. Oh, good, it's entertaining good, good. For me. Um, right. So, so that level of a ma a ma person with their with their thoughts is the actually the ultimate state of spiritual existence, where where it's not that I hear the message from or what we call prophecy and then do what the divine plan is for my soul, but r rather actually, it's. Immediate. It's not. You can't even say immediate. It's it's one, one. And the same. It's one. When the when the light of the creator desires me to say something, I say it because that is all the only thought that 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 goes through me. When when the light of the creator wants me to to you know to help somebody, that 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 automatically happens. It's an automatic. There's no again, separation as, between you and the, the the divine thought. And again, this is a, a high level, and I think at times probably many of us have, have felt it at times. But I think it is important to understand that that's the ultimate state to which we need to go to. But I'd be very happy if, as an effect of our podcast today, our <laughs> listeners start working on on the state that's called prophecy. Yeah, I've certainly had moments like that. It's a hard place to get to, but when you are one with the Creator like that, nothing feels as powerful, purposeful, whole, complete as that. I think the closest, I think that the times I felt that was in labor, especially with Abigail. It was just not, I was not even, I, I, I felt like my body was just a vehicle and and I was a soul and the creator and Abigail's soul and it was just a complete light. It wasn't, it's different. And she was the fourth, so it's not, you know, they're not always like that, um, but yeah. Beautiful. So, before <laughs> we we conclude, I'd like to share with our listeners uh, an email that we received from one of our listeners, mm -hmm. and hopefully this inspires all of our listeners to send their inspirations. So, actually, this is a a an idea that one of our listeners, Raquel, has for our listeners, and uh, just as an inspiration that you can inspire our listeners by sending your your ideas, questions, comments, stories to Monica and Michael at spirituallyhungry.life. So Raquel writes, Hi, Monica and Michael. I have a journaling practice that has been very healing for me. It's called Journal Speak. And in a nutshell, it entails writing down anything and everything that is coming up, either good, bad, nasty, the most impermissible thoughts, purge it all, and then shred, delete, burn, or destroy. If you want to learn more about it, check out Nicole Sachs and the Cure for Chronic Pain. My dilemma with this Am I engaging in evil speech with this journaling practice? <laughs> I would love to hear your opinion on this. Love the podcast. Thank you for giving us so much great content. Much love. Do you have an answer? Yeah, I mean, it's not evil speech. You're getting it out of you. It's better having those thoughts out and down, and then you're burning them. So, I mean, I wrote about a similar um, practice in Fears on an Option about how you write down your fear, you burn it. Because there's an energy when you burn things away, it removes It's actually that. an ancient Kabbalistic process, right? Especially, if the, again, around fears, like you said. Correct. So, um, no, write and burn away. <laughs> I think it's just an exercise to get clear about where your thoughts are and if they're supportive and healthy or if they're not. So, I think it's good. Nice. And thank you, Raquel, for sharing that with us and our listeners. One more. Uh, this is actually from uh, Apple Podcasts um, from one of our listeners. Uh, the Soul's Desire episode, episode 
was so thought provoking that I listened to it twice. Mm -hmm. This podcast is such a great gift. It challenges me to think differently and grow. Thank you. Love that. So thank you. And again, hopefully we've inspired our listeners through the podcast, but more, more importantly, through the letters and, and reviews that we share with our listeners from other listeners. So please go to Apple Podcasts, write five star reviews, go every, share this podcast with everybody you know, and send your questions, comments, stories, inspirations to Monica and Michael at spirituallyhungry.life. And as always, we hope you enjoyed listening to this podcast as much as we enjoyed recording. Stay spiritually hungry.